So the New York store was the first store. Mm. So all of their marketing, all of their everything was put into that store. All the celebrities walked to that store. Right. Everything was in that store. I walked in with a purple mohawk and they were <laughs> like, you look like a stylist. Are you a stylist? I was like, well, yes, I am. Right, right, for sure. <laughs> Last and six they're months. Like, yes. Well, yeah. Do you have experience? Well, yes, I do. Right, right. Ain't got not, not a lick of experience. <laughs> but um, I sat, I sat with them. They hired me. I even, I even undersold myself, really. Because mm. once I talked to the other stylist, she's like, "No, you could have got like triple what right. you asked for." But I was just happy to be in the building. I was happy to have a job. From there, my first day of work, I met Miley Cyrus. My mm. third day of work, I met Eva Longoria. Like, within weeks of working there, I met Rihanna, Missy Elliott, wow. at that top shop, right? Because celebrities went through the back door up to the fourth floor. Mm -hmm. And that's where the stylist or head of, head, head of style could pull clothes from top shop and create a rack for the celebrities to look through, mm. right? So my journey goes... I'm getting, I'm getting to it. I'm getting yeah. to it. You guys, listen. So I started at... Top shop. I loved it. I didn't want to leave. But my college said, you can't stay at that school. You have to come back to graduate from our school. You where was, can't. Where is Kent State at? It's in Ohio. In Ohio. Got it's you. Kent, Ohio. Like a tiny so town. Atlanta, only studying abroad. Atlanta, uh, New York. And every time, it seems like every time you get something rolling, they're like, nope, yes, come on back. Yes, <laughs> yes. So I finally had a great job. Was so excited. Every single day you walk in the job. Like, I, I, um, I styled... Uh, the lady who sings, uh, girls just want to have fun. Uh, uh. Uh, I can't think of her name right now, but I styled her, mm. right? Like, alleged, like I styled legends in this store. Mm. Like, from me styling Rihanna, she invited me to her album party. I started getting free oh, wow. studio time. Like, it was just like things, the doors of life were finally opening up for me, right? My school calls. <laughs> I can't like, nah, you have a, you're a little too lit. Come She's like, back. yeah, come on back so you can graduate. I'm like... Oh my God! So I'm I'm fighting. Should I just drop out of school right, right. on your last semester, mm. <laughs> or do you stay in New York? So I went back to school, graduated, mm. fell in love, got uh. married. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I was too young, too lit. It was. <laughs> I mean, it was just. I, I thought like. I'm never going to meet a guy like this again. And it was so different, you know, with me being in the music scene. Yeah. And, like, I feel like guys always felt like they knew what I wanted. Like, oh, you want to go to Beanie Hanna's? Are you? Like, no, I actually just want Starbucks. You know, like, <laughs> right. so he was different. He was foreign. He was from Pakistan. Mm. He was oh, Muslim. Wow. I was Christian. He didn't even really speak a lot of English when we got together. Mm, love like it was got just no language, different. <laughs> love ain't got no language. I it love was it. just different. And so, yeah. you know, we tried to make it work and it didn't work. And then I, in the mean, while that was, while that marriage was going, I um, went on tour with a really major artist, like a huge Disney star, which because of my contracts, I don't want to talk about it, but a huge, huge Disney star. Remember, I just mentioned her in my last the last conversation about working at Topshop mm. it's all about relationships right. so while I was at Topshop I met her publicist right mm. me and her became really good friends she said hey we're going on tour I literally just got out of college like a week ago mm. literally just got out of college she's like we're going on tour all you gotta do is pay for your travel everything else is paid for villas mm. everything else is paid for nice. It's going to be a great internship. Like, just come. I'm like, what? What? Come to Europe by myself? How is this even possible? I don't know, right? I saw a man put his hands on my mother. So what I did was I repeated the pattern. I always tell people there's no such thing as generational curses, but there is a generational pattern. All we're doing is recycling the patterns that we see. So I saw that pattern. And... I didn't know, I was raised real religious. So because of that, they say, as long as he loves God and he loves you, he's a good man. They didn't teach us chemistry, compatibility, mm. you know, goals and values and standards. They didn't teach us that. Yeah. So I, I went in not knowing very much about relationships because I wasn't taught. 
anything. I had to learn everything that I teach now. I had to learn on my own. And I have quite a few mentors that are, um, they're my seasoned wisdom ladies that I go hang out with. I hung out with one of them on last sat- last Friday and she's just amazing. She's like 69 and she walks around like this, darling. And she said, oh, April, let me look at you. Oh, you look beautiful. Yes, sit like this, dude. So I hang out with women that are more seasoned and have more wisdom than I have. So I just take what I learned from them and my personal experiences and I share it with my audience. Gotcha. So do you think you were looking for that because that's what you saw? Are you associating that with love? Like if a man doesn't abuse me, they don't love me. I didn't think I associated with love. I think I associated with that's what it, that's just what it it is. It is what it is. Yeah. You know, because that's what I saw. And so, and I noticed even my daughter, she didn't get into an abusive relationship, but before I broke the pattern, my daughter um, relived my pattern in choosing the wrong husband. Mm. Now she got her, she got a good now, but she, I, she came in on the last, the, the last part of my change. Mm. She got the last part of that. That's why I always say our becoming has nothing more to really to do with us as much as it has to do with those that are watching us. Mm-hmm. So now my, I look at my daughter and she, she said, oh my, I got this. It's, 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 everything is good. And even the guy that she's with, she, he said, I don't know what you taught her, but I'm about to marry your daughter. I heard that. I, I said, we're that. going. Said, I know we're looking at houses. <laughs> what you think about this one? I said, oh, okay. You know, mm. but she didn't get there just because she got there because I became. Mm. And so I always talk about our love legacy. We always talk about money hustling, grinding, leaving material things. But what about the love legacy? Are we leaving the kids a love blueprint? So we have so many people that are afraid of love, but I'm doing this for my kids. Well, why don't you fall in love for your kids? Mm. So that they can see what a healthy relationship looks like. So that's the area. The reason why I am so adamant about this is because that's where I failed. With the kids, after I went through my divorce and everything, I shut everything down. So they didn't get to see a man loving on their mother properly. Mm-hmm. And so they didn't get to see their mom loving on a man properly because I went into that, nope, it's just me and my three, yeah. you know? Mm-hmm. And then I start watching as they start to grow and how they chose mates and how they start to move in the area of relationships. And it wasn't wise. And it was mm-hmm. because they didn't see it. So we can tell them anything, but are we showing them? Are we having enough courage to say, if I have enough courage to say, I do everything for my kids and I put my kids first, what about the love part? Yeah. How do you, how do you, um, so i give you the scenario. There's a woman, bad relationship after bad relationship after bad relationship. Their heart is hardened and they say things like, I'm sure you've heard this before. Uh, I'm prepared to be single for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. I don't want to fall in love because it hurts. Mm-hmm. And I can kind of respect it. I mean, if, if you try something, fail, try something, fail, try something, fail, and then you look at all the stats, like most relationships aren't going to work out anyway, how do you get, just because maybe I saw love, I'm not, I can't control the other person though. But, the, but here's for my thing. I don't respect it. The reason being is because if you have a job and you lose your job, what do you do? Get another one. Okay. And you lose that job, then what you do? Get another one. But what do you do before you get another job? You upgrade your resume because you've learned other skill sets, mm. right? And now you go get a better job. And when you go get that other job, if it didn't work out, they closed down, something happened, you have another set of skills. So no one can ever tell me I'm not going to get in a relationship because of this when I watch you go get another job. So if you haven't been in a relationship in a long time and, and you're using that as an excuse, but yet in that time you wouldn't got a degree, You went and got your credit right to get a house. You did all of these things to upgrade yourself, but you still have the same story from five years ago? No, you can't sell me on that. I got you. I I, I can feel that. I can feel that. So, but well, let me me ask you. Are you saying that when you improve and you become the woman or the man that can handle a good woman or a man, they automatically come? Yes. I have a new book called Identity Switch, Becoming the Woman Who Gets What She Wants. And that's what the book is all about. So for over 10 years, I've been, I've been a dating coach. And before that, I was a business coach since 2005 or six. And no matter what I was teaching, 
I started to realize what the common denominator is. It's like everybody wants the information on how to attract a better man or better woman or how to make millions of dollars or, or whatever their thing is. But they don't want to change into the, the identity of a person that can have that. So you're asking me to give you where the good men hang out, but you still walk around with this hurt and pain. Well, the woman that you're becoming, she knows how to vet men now. The woman you're becoming, she's a wiser woman now. Mm. So you can't take what I'm teaching you here and try to apply to your own self because a, be- a, a better man is nothing more than a byproduct of you becoming a better woman. That makes sense because you can, you know how you have this homegirl in off rip. I don't even know the guy, but are you dating him? That? Really? <laughs> yeah. And it's because I guess that woman can't even see. Yes. It's like, it's like, I just got a Tesla. Prior to getting a Tesla, I didn't see a lot of Teslas around. Mm. Now I see them everywhere. So once you switch over into a different view you get something different. So when people say, oh, dating in Atlanta is hard. Dating in Atlanta has never been hard for me. No? Never. And when I tell you, I've had fun dating in Atlanta and it's all because of how I view myself, how I presented myself and me saying, you know what, April, you can't hide behind the domestic violence. You can't hide behind the 12 years of molestation or the um, rapes or whatever, all the things you've gone through. You can't hide behind that because at the end of the day, if you weigh it and you say, even though I've been all through all this, I still want to have somebody there. That means you you have to heal yourself. If you can say, I don't want a relationship and not put it on any reason, but I just don't want a relationship, I'll believe you. But if you say, well, I don't want a relationship because blah, 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 blah. Oh yeah, you lying. You lying. And you need to make an identity switch to become the woman that doesn't make those old mistakes or the man. Because we, I get a lot of guys that I call them Captain Sabums for whatever reason. Well, normally it's having a toxic mother. Normally a man's first um, experience with toxic, toxic femininity is with his mom. Bro talks though, don't sleep on it. Bro talks, is yes, it's a thing? it's a thing. <laughs> is it really? It really is. And it's not just for those of, of the LGBTQ com- plus community. It's, it's a thing. I mean, Deion Sanders gets it. You know what's crazy? When you <laughs> said that, like, I'm like, oh, wow, that'd be dope. And then you said it's not just for LGBTQ+. Plus. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't want that there. Ah! Because <laughs> it seems like... <laughs> but you're saying a lot of, like, men use it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. I mean, don't you care? I mean, you may not care to the extent of a woman per se, but you, we are all getting older. How's my Every face? day. Every, your face actually looks good. Can but I, I did it? notice when you raised your brows, like, there was some horizontal lines, but... Oh, so like if I yeah the wrinkles here yeah so hold on so <laughs> Botox can take away the wrinkles when I so, raise my eyebrows so you would have to get some treatments over time because right. this is something that didn't happen overnight but definitely so there's something wrong with that I thought that's why people's wrong. faces are I, I don't want to say that there's nothing wrong anything wrong with it. <laughs> Yo, I never even thought about it but I'm raise not your saying eyebrows. there's anything there's anything You're wrong right? with it. Let me raise yours. Yeah, he has a little bit. Yo, See, mine he has really less. bad. He's the youngest, right? So he, you're younger? Yeah. He has less. And I he, never <laughs> realized how wrinkled my head is. Like, so that's not natural. I won't say that it's not natural. It's just a part of the Who's aging yours? process. <gasps> you don't got to like, my whole my whole forehead changes. <laughs> Do yours. You don't got no lines. Well, I got Botox. So let me just let you know, I did. I had them very deep. It's a part of our facial ex- when we make facial expressions. That's crazy. It'll it, it'll be it'll emphasize it more over time. Like you can tell how people express themselves facially based on their lines. And I'll so I'll never see my own face again the same way. <laughs> I will never I can never like that's and now it looks crazy to me because I thought everybody all right. Okay, I'll put my hat back on. It's all a young kid. <laughs> so that's okay. Brotox. Yeah. Botox for women. Is it just the foreheads or is it? No, you get, you treat, you can treat like Botox. You can treat a lot of different areas, but generally speaking, especially introductory, it would be like the forehead in between the brows and like the lines on the side. Mm. Eyes. Yeah. No. Follow one course until successful. Write this d- down. Focus. Follow one course until successful. When your energy is not focused in one area, 
you cannot be successful in all areas. It doesn't work that way. Mm. And even when I look at my multiple businesses, they all could even be doing better. Mm. But it's me trying to separate my time and work on six things. When I was focused on one, I made even more in that one than these put together. For sure. You get what I'm For saying? Sure. So people think multiple streams of income mean multi-millionaire. No, I mean, you might be tired, stressed out, overworked, and underpaid. Mm -hmm. So um, focus, and, and I truly believe that where focus goes, energy flows. And so you can't be all everywhere, even in your family life, your personal life. Like you have to find a focus and decide to sit in that focus of that thing until the desired result is, is accomplished. Do you have like some sort of formula when, because some people are like, yo, I'm making $5,000 a month. I'm about to do something else or 10000 or 20000 Is there is there some sort of formula we can follow to say, okay, I'm going to lock in on this one thing for X amount of time or reach some sort of success that we can define and then it's time to split focus? So here's what I would say, you know, and the, the gurus will give you this philosophical answer. And I'm going to say, find your peak performance, mm -hmm. performing your peak performance. But if it goes back to biblical, the, the Bible says, be fruitful and multiply. Mm -hmm. If you're making 5,000, but you have not multiplied somebody else making 5,000 like you, mm -hmm. you can't go nowhere. Mm -hmm. Until you have helped somebody match your income, stay right there. Yeah. yeah. Got you. And Got then you. what's going to end up happening is that when you, when you multiply what you've accomplished in somebody else, or at least half of that in somebody else. If you make it 5,000 a month, have you helped somebody else make 5,000 a month? If not, you really ain't successful. You just temporarily winning. <laughs> I like that. Okay, we clap it up. We clap it up. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, that's how I keep myself grounded. Yeah. You know, like, okay, Stormy, who did you help? Like, my goal is 1,000 families, you know? And people will be like, well, we, I think you had a billion families now. I get what they're saying, but... In my mind, I know I could get comfortable. Like mm -hmm. I have enough money. I make enough money right now that I could retire. I could chill mm -hmm. and not do nothing. And I could still travel. I could still eat. I could still fly first class. I could still buy jewelry and clothes. And I'm not saying retire and be poor. I could retire and live an amazing life. But how boring is that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about. 100%. You know, 100%. you look back at your old self, you're like, how many people look like how I used to look and live like how I used to live that just need to hear from me? So they can see and learn my way of doing it. Because no matter what anybody may think about you, David, or even me, we have had mentors and coaches along the way, right? Mm -hmm. But you still did it in this certain type of way. For so sure. now it's like, ooh, 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 I got a way, I got a way. Let me teach yeah. them the way. Yeah. Used to work at Cheesecake Factory, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's what I feel. I feel like until you can say, I make a million a month, who did I help make a million a month? Mm -hmm. If you ain't helping nobody make a million a month, you just lucked up. If you make 10 grand a month and you ain't help nobody make 10 grand a month, you ain't multiplying. What happened right. to that? You so biblical. You so God. <laughs> well, your multiplication, you right. forgot about that part. I know marketing and branding yeah. and people like me, I can hire a broker. Correct. I can have Shan's Realty. Yep. I can hire a broker yes. and I'll just run this just as another business where yes. I just hired somebody to run the business. Exactly. <sighs> you don't have to have a real estate license. Mm -hmm. You can literally just say, listen, I'm good at business. I know business structure. I know marketing. If you open up Shan's Real Estate and you hire a broker and say, listen, this is the salary plus commission I'm going to pay you. So because you're the actual person, you're the broker in charge. You are the managing broker. So as the managing broker of these contracts, you'll be responsible for. But I'm the business owner. And I'm putting the structure in place. Ooh. That's it. I could, I could partner with somebody who really, you know, it's like people that really know real estate and they're like, they're good in their yes, little pocket. That's, that's what you do. You partner with someone that really knows real estate. They have their broker's license. And now that you, you have your own real estate company. There are a lot of <laughs> huge companies where the owner doesn't have a real estate license. Okay. Teach me how to build this. Okay. Right so, here. Okay. So, so <laughs> one, if you are a broker, and you know all the stuff you know about real, you know it, like the back of your hand, you're really good, you service your clients, your clients are happy, but you don't know how to find clients. You don't really know how to find agents. Mm -hmm. Come to death row. Come to death row. So <laughs> <laughs> and listen, come to death row records. Well, we ain't gonna be all dancing in your video. You feel me? Let me tell come you on, something. Man. Social proof real estate firm. Let's Ready. go. Okay. And so the walk you through it, the first thing you wanna do is you're going to find you a managing broker. So you get you a managing broker, you negotiate that salary, and they have to have had their real estate license for at least three years, right? Mm -hmm. 
Then they, from there, you fill out the application with the commission, the Georgia Real Estate Commission for Atlanta. Fill out the um, application because it's you as the owner and that person as the managing broker. Once they approve it, there are a few things that you're going to have to get in the back end before you launch. One, who is going to handle finance? Because these agents want to get paid their commissions. Mm -hmm. So talk, get you a financing and commission-based like software so you can process it. Secondly, you need to have your processes in place. Like people, when they come to a company, they need to know what you expect from them. So write out your policies and procedures. Get your ICA, which is your independent contractor agreement in place. You need that in place so you can outline what you're offering in exchange for the split. Mm -hmm. Then decide what you want your split to be. Like, you know, my... <laughs> It depends. Like there are mm -hmm. people, there are companies that do transaction based where they're only going to charge you per transaction. Mm -hmm. There are companies that are going to charge you a split. What is your split? And the split is going to say this. Let me break that down. Real, real quick before I forget this. Do I have to, do I get charged for each, as a broker, do I get charged for each agent that I have? Like, can I have some agents just sitting around and if they don't make no money, nobody makes money or. I'm charging, <laughs> no, I charge a monthly fee. As a company, okay. you're going to charge a monthly fee for access to your office, access to your backend systems processes. So you're going to get paid a monthly fee, but if they just sitting around, that's all you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So determine what that monthly fee is to see if it's going to help cover your operations, operational expenses, because you don't want to, you know, charge too little. Oh, I got a vision. No, keep you going. Know? Okay. So, so keep going, keep going. You're talking about the splits. <laughs> so, so now you have the splits and now it's like, do you want to do an 80, 20 split, 85, 15 split and in, in which they keep 85%, you get 15%. And at mm. what point will they cap yep. or will they not cap? I was with the company before that never capped. And what is a cap? So that means, Hey, you want to come work for death row records for per year? You got to pay me 25,000. I'm going to get a cut of your commission every single deal until you hit 25,000. Once you hit 25,000, then all I'm getting from you is your monthly fees and it resets mm. every count. It resets every anniversary year. Or there are companies that's like, it's an 85, 15 split period. There yeah. is no cap. I'm going to get paid in infinitely on your deals and that's it. So you decide. Which one's worse? Which one's better? Atlanta does it. I can tell you, I like the infinite. I like yeah. the infinite, but I can tell you Atlanta doesn't do well with it. They just don't. No. People, it's, too much, it's too much competition, too many people. Um, you know, black people, we want to keep our money. You know, it's black yeah, excellence. Sure. And so you got to create a structure that is the cap makes sense for the amount of support you're offering. You're not pressed like that anymore. And, you know, I get the whole, oh my gosh, she's 46. And, you know, what did what they say? They said she's 46 and... um. She's not a high value woman and blah, 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 <laughs> blah, 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 blah. What they don't understand is this. Women back in the day, as we were going through evolution, they got married younger. It wasn't because they loved the man. It was because he was for survival. Women couldn't get bank accounts. Women could not buy houses. Women couldn't even fend for themselves. So yes, this, this um, idea of if a woman is left, what, 25 or, or 35 and over, she she's a has-been. That's only because of the conditionings back in the day. Now that we are able to take care of ourselves um, and we able to look good, because I look good to be 46, <laughs> we, we, we are able to pick a man based upon his character and his integrity and his spirituality. We don't have to just run to you all for a bag anymore. And I think men should be happy about that because the narrative is, and I hear it all over the internet all the time, is that if a woman is over a particular age, she can't get a particular type of man. And that is so not true because the only reason why we were getting y'all when we were younger is because we didn't have rights. So we had to go snag mm -hmm. the best man that we could get because all we could do was have babies and clean, possibly clean people's houses, but we couldn't even get credit cards without a husband. Mm. So those days are, have changed. The problem now is women have gotten so far over into the independent side that now they've lost the, the interdependent side needing for the man. But back in the day, as we started to evolve, you know, in caveman times, women got together and said, OK, I'm going to get him. OK, that one, he can go out. He's not a village guy. He's the hunter. So everybody wanted to get the hunter. That's why you women say, oh, I want the alpha male. That's where that comes from. Wow. I want the man that's going to go out and he's going to go get everything. So that's why women gravitate to him because that's in our makeup. But now that we are able to have our rights, buy our homes and all of these things ourselves, we can actually take our time. And technically, back in the day, we were living to be over 100 years old. So it's Western culture and all of the diseases and the 
uh, food products and all of the, the stuff that we have now that have caused us to lessen in age. So when someone says, oh, you're 46 and you haven't, but I'm bad though. <laughs> I'm a baddie. I'm a baddie, though, you know, and I and the thing is, it's not just from an outward appearance. I know what it means to be a woman and I know what it means to take care of an amazing man because I had to learn that. There's a fear that makes me stop and there's a fear that makes me go. I there's a been fear that makes you stop, stop and, and a fear, fear that, that makes, makes you go. go. Okay. So the fear that makes me go is knowing that this can go away. Mm. Like, I mean, let's 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 take the crypto, for example. Right. I, I looked in my account, account yesterday and it's, it's, you know, I, I believe if you can't afford to lose it, don't invest it. Yeah, you know, sure. unless you invest in it yourself, you're never losing, yeah. right? Keep it low because you, you know, everybody don't know. You, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no, no, my crypto yeah. account, my Coinbase account. Okay, I got you, got you, got you. Got you feel me? I thought you saw. Okay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and it was down 70, over $70,000. So mm. what about the people that really took their last? And like, I saw it yesterday, just like, I don't look at it. And I'm like, oh, wow, $70,000. What if that was all I had for a business and my job? I remember when my crypto account was like over a quarter of a million dollars. And then yesterday I was like, oh crap, this is crazy. Sheesh. But it was like, that's the fear. It's like, okay, it's go time because you thought it was going to be this. Mm -hmm. But the beautiful thing is I know it's going to grow. Then like, for example, my, my other businesses. And I never told nobody this, but exclusive behind exclusive. the scenes. I believe in having leverage too, right? So I am the top income earner in my company, right? But, um, and I'm happy. I love my multi-level marketing company. But I also know, like, if you go acting crazy or something, I got me a couple of other businesses that I could fall back on. Mm -hmm. I got my own skincare. I can just mm -hmm. take my energy and put it over here. I, I got a CBD company. I can take my energy mm -hmm. and put it over mm -hmm. here. So, number one, I believe in imagination, visualization as well. Number two. Number one is burning hold desire. On, hold on, because that is real. Because I've seen a lot of uh, companies, because... At the end of the day, it's not your company, right? It's not your company. But And I've seen a lot of companies just go AWOL. They start doing what they want, especially when they start paying you too much. They're like, mm. ooh, try to figure out ways to not pay you. I've seen people, companies take people's check, right? Because, you know, you you think you're an entrepreneur, you built it, and they can take that joint. <laughs> but I like the fact that you said, and I, and I feel like you've probably been in the office once or twice and had to remind them, like, hey, listen. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's, not, let's not get it twisted. Yeah, I have. That's major. Yeah. So, so I just had to throw that in there. But so becoming a millionaire mindset. So number one, burning desire. Like you have to have a burning desire. Yeah. Um, and most people just have the desire. Yeah. It ain't burning enough. Like I believe in principles. I live a very principle based life. So whenever I'm in doubt, I go down to principles or I go back to principles. And I mean, I say down. So like I chunk things down. So I believe in like honor thy mother and thy father. Like, I take care of my dad to this day, you know, he's on an allowance. He don't ask me, he know he got his wow. check. At one point, my dad was on a $2,000 a week allowance. Mm. Mm. I took it down now. Jeez. But <laughs> no, so 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 I'm, I'm saying it because I have a burning desire to do that. I can't imagine my dad calling me saying I need $200 and I'm mad and I'm arguing with him because he asked me for $200. And I see people do that. Yeah. I've been with people and they mom or dad calling for 200 and they mad. That is your mama. Mm. That is your daddy. Give your mama or your dad. That should be baked into your bills. Yeah. And they're probably not mad at the fact that they're calling. They're probably mad at the fact that they can't provide it. It's, it's both. They just have programmed their mind to be like, why my mama keep calling me? Like, I'm mm. the only child she called. Okay, well, good. <laughs> But I look at it totally different. So that is honorable to me. Like, it's like, I always want you to have to put some respect on my name. Yeah. So I have a burning desire for that, though. It's not a negotiable for me. It's not a negotiable that I live freely. It's not a negotiable that I get to do what I want when I want. Yeah. I, I collected a million dollars for a company and they gave me 25 cents and I used to eat lean cuisines and I, I had a carpool with my friend to work. Mm. You don't know what I'm talking about. And my water was off back home. I had to go turn it back on with the pliers. Those things made me create the burning desire. Hey, I guess with people, they might be in a situation, but it doesn't hurt bad enough for them to do something. They desire to get out of the situation, but because sometimes the job is enough for them to live, it's, it doesn't create a burning desire.